Well, I've been procrastinating, but it's finally time to tackle this wiring. It's probably my least favorite thing to do, but if you take it one step at a time, it's not that bad. I have made the decision to go 12 volt uh, with an alternator and a voltmeter. So I couldn't find any um, clear wiring diagrams on the internet that I could refer to. So I made up my own and uh, I will share that with you if anybody's interested when I am done. I don't wanna talk about it too much right now because I don't know if it's accurate or not. So let me get all the wiring uh, installed to make sure everything works. And then I'll revise my diagram if necessary and share it with anybody who wants it. So for starters, I think I'll focus on the instrument panel and voltmeter and light switch and the ignition switch. I'm just going with a simple on off light switch rather than the original three position light switch. So the only problem with this one is it's not fused. So I guess I'll put an inline fuse for this. Because... So for the light switch, I'm actually gonna hook up a couple of leads to the post before I install it um, because it's kind of tied up in there. I'm gonna use blue for the uh, lights just so I can easily identify them. So far, so good. Uh, this voltmeter actually has a light. I'm not sure if I'm gonna wire that in or not. I just don't see me using that very often, but I don't know. Actually looks pretty good in there. It's got an orange needle that kind of matches the Chalmers orange. I like it. Pull these back out of the way for a moment. Slips on over the posts, one washer, one nut, 5 sixteenths maybe? Yeah, I think so. Cinch this down snug but not too tight. Okay, we're gonna make yellow the power out from the uh, ignition switch. And that will of course need to go to one side of the light switch. And I'll also give 12 volts to the light bulb on the voltmeter. I'm actually gonna trim this yellow wire back just a bit so it's not binding up on me. better. The other side of the light switch wire will run up front to the headlights. Black to the ignition switch will be battery in. And I need to find a ground for this. So if you're running an ammeter versus a voltmeter, an ammeter is a current through device. So a current comes in one side, comes out the other, 
and uh, that's how it reads the current. But a voltmeter is sort of a dead end. The voltage comes in, but there's nothing that comes out. It just goes to ground, and the voltmeter tells you, you know, what your uh, battery is putting out and or what your alternator is doing if it happens to be running. So that's why I need to put a ground. So I drilled a small hole for a screw. Uh, we're gonna run ground to there on the inside and I'm gonna grab ground to somewhere on the tractor after I get it installed. Okay, so I've got my ground from the uh, light bulb from the voltmeter and uh, the ground out, which I'll attach to the tractor somewhere. I'll just run that down through here. All right, so the only other thing I did, I ran another jumper wire 12 volts out from the switch to the post right here on the voltmeter. And then now I'm gonna run a jumper wire from this post to ground, and that will complete that circuit. All right, that should do it. Let's go spend two minutes on a bench test and see if this actually works. I'm taking ground from the instrument panel, grounding on the battery, 12 volts from the battery, 12 volts into the instrument panel. And uh, let me get the key. Okay, here we go. All right, good. We've got almost 13 volts and the light is working in the voltmeter. All activated by the key. Turn the lights off. Now, I just want to test to make sure we've got 12 volts coming out of the uh, headlight switch. And I think what I'll do, since the headlights for the tractor happen to be right here, I'll just use one of them for the test. Put my ground on the uh, housing of the light and turn the light switch on. Yeah. All right, there's the finished instrument panel. So far, so good. This will be battery in, this will be ground on the tractor. Okay, moving on. I thought at first that I might uh, make this wiring harness from scratch, and then I came to my senses. So I bought this one from Steiner Tractor. I've had uh, good luck and good service from Steiner Tractor every time I've ordered from them. By ordering the wiring harness as a kit, you know, you get all the right gauges, you get all the right lengths. You even get some help with wiring. Um, they number them, and then they give you a cheat sheet that goes along with it. Again, mine's gonna be a little bit different because I have a voltmeter versus an ammeter. tight fit in there but the shifter does miss it okay I've got the inline fuse installed for the headlights so I'll turn the key switch on see what happens key on and the voltmeter works that's a good sign and the light is working also turn on the lights we have a drop in voltage, so that tells me that the lights are probably on. Let's see.
Lights off, on, off. Okay, I just wanna check to make sure we're getting power to the coil. Key on. Grab the ground. 12.71 volts. Very good. All right, here's my ground strap for the alternator. And uh, I'm just gonna use just a tiny section of it. I don't need this whole thing. All right, let's look at the alternator here. This is a Delco Remy, uh, I guess you'd call it a three wire alternator. This is the battery terminal. This is ground. The R terminal, uh, one of the things that does is if you have to excite the generator to get it to function, that's where you zap it with 12 volts. But otherwise, I'm gonna leave that disconnected. Terminals one and two here. One is essential. Uh, that goes back to the ignition switch and essentially it excites the alternator and keeps the alternator working. You could actually run the alternator without a, a wire on the number one terminal, but every single time you started the tractor, you'd have to excite the generator on this post with 12 volts to get it to start to work. So that's essential. The number two terminal is just optional. That is sort of like a, if you wanna run an idiot light back to your instrument panel, that's sort of like a go, no go uh, indication if the alternator is working or not. So I'm not going to run that. I can tell if it's working or not by uh, reading the voltmeter. The alternator came with a plug that capped both of these off, but because I definitely wanna use number one and not number two, I cut that plug in half. So I'm just gonna cap the number two and hook up the uh, wire to number one. 